So you're moving to the Atlanta area and you're thinking about buying a condo. Is that a smart choice? What's the condo market like? What are the things you need to know before buying a condo? That's everything I'm going to tackle in today's episode. And I'm going to bring on a very special guest. She is the first guest ever onto my channel. She is a local lender here in the Atlanta area. She is one smart cookie. And she'll just kind of talk about different things that you need to know about getting a loan for a condo because it's a little bit different than buying a single family home. So stay tuned. We're talking all about condos in Atlanta today, right now. Hey guys, my name is Molly and welcome to my channel. If you are new or returning and you want to know everything there is to know about living in the Atlanta area, well make sure you hit that subscribe button to follow along and give this video a like, it does help me out. But if you're making a move to the Atlanta area and you need help with that future home purchase, make sure you hit me up, shoot me a text, give me a call, send me an email. I'm here waiting for you to help you out and make a smooth move to the Atlanta area. I've been hearing from a lot of you and I love helping you out. Okay, so we're gonna talk about condos today. I get a lot of questions about condos, a lot of people looking at condos. I have a lot of videos about condos. You can see the skyline behind me. I'm in Piedmont Park overlooking the Midtown skyline. I love this area and I'd say, Midtown and Buckhead are going to be your primary areas where you're going to get those high-rise condos, but there's condo buildings, smaller ones, spread throughout the entire Atlanta metro area. And yeah, there's just tons of questions about condos, so I figured I would tackle those in this video. So by far the most common conversation that I have with condo buyers is they could say something to the effect of, Molly, I want to buy a condo, live in it for maybe a year, two years, and then I'm going to hang on to it, rent it out. That is a great idea. I, I love the idea in, of an investment property, but this is something you need to know, and I've mentioned this several times in a lot of my other condo tours, uh, that there are rental restrictions here in the Atlanta area. Most buildings are going to have a rental restriction. Generally, it's about 25% of total units that can be rented out at one time. So if you've got a building that has 100 units, you do the math, you get about, there's 25 units that can be rented out at one single time. So that may change your thought process a little bit. Um, you can put your name on a waiting list and I always encourage buyers of a condo complex to put your name on that waiting list even if you have no um, desire to rent out your condo unit. You just never know if life changes, what your plans take you to you know, a couple years down the road. So it's always a good idea just to put your name on that waiting list. So the way that a wait list works is you put your name on the bottom of that wait list and as a rental permit becomes available, the HOA is gonna reach out to the person at the top of that list, say, hey, Mr. Joe, do you wanna rent out your unit? If he says no, they're just gonna to go to the next person in the line and so on and so forth. Now, some of these rental wait lists, they can be you know, five to six years long. So you know, if you think you're gonna buy a condo and say, well, I'll just put my name on the wait list and um, then I'll rent it out when, I, when, when it's my turn. Well, maybe you don't have plans on staying in Atlanta six, seven years. Uh, so that may not be the best plan for you. Now, remember that if you do get a rental permit, most of these HOAs require a one year lease term. Some will do six months, but very, very few will do, you know, week or monthly rentals. I've seen a few that will allow Airbnb rentals, but that is definitely a needle in a haystack. Now, there are some condo buildings here in the Atlanta area that do not have rental restrictions. Again, that's going to limit your search quite a bit. It's going to be very few. Um, you know, I'd say I can count like probably 12 different buildings that do not have rental restrictions. So if you know for sure that you definitely want to be able to rent out your unit, you probably need to focus your efforts just on those buildings that do not have rental restrictions. Now, I will say some of those buildings are very simple. They're not going to be super fancy. So it just kind of depends on your taste. If you're willing to do something that's kind of very simple, maybe not very updated, then great. But if you want like fancy, high end, well, you're not gonna find that here. Sometimes sellers will have a rental permit in place that they are including with the sale of their condo unit. This can be great if you want to be an automatic investor, like you want to buy it, you don't wanna live in it, but you want to rent it out right away. In this case, you probably have about 60 to 90 days to identify a tenant for your unit. Otherwise, you lose that rental permit. So this is something to keep in mind. You know, if you see a, a, an advertisement of 
a condo unit for sale and it has a rental permit, don't think you can buy it and just hold on to that rental permit and then rent it out when you want to. No, you have to find a rental or a renter right away. So what are some things you need to make note of when you're shopping for condos? Well, one thing, just know, like if you're looking in Midtown, most of these buildings are going to have parking garages. If you're looking at kind of an older garden style type of unit, you may just have a parking space that's uncovered in a big parking lot. Some may not even have an assigned parking space, so you really need to understand that. Some units will come with a storage unit and sometimes that can make the difference in the price. It can be a little bit more expensive if it comes with a storage unit. And I would say on average, I've seen storage units cost around seven to $10,000. And I also have seen homeowners that don't use their storage unit. They basically lease that space out to someone else in the building that may need the space. So that's always an option too if you buy a condo unit that doesn't come with a storage unit and you want one. Another thing to pay attention to, what kind of amenities does that building have? A lot of these high rises here in Midtown and Buckhead, you're gonna have a gym, a pool, a front desk person, but some of these smaller ones may not. So it really kind of depends on whether that's important to you. Of course, the more amenities it has and the better condition that they are in, the price might be higher or your HOA fees may be a little higher. Speaking of HOA fees, not all HOA fees are equal. You'll probably notice that if you start really seriously looking for condos here in the Atlanta area. And you really have to compare apples to apples because some condo buildings will provide more amenities, so your HOA fee is going to go up. Sometimes the HOA may seem high, even though there's really no amenities, because you get smaller buildings like this, where it's maybe only you know 40 units total. So they got to split up the maintenance cost of this entire grounds between them. So your HOA fee might get a little higher that way. Also, make sure you're comparing apples to apples when you're looking at HOA fees between buildings, because some HOA fees may include some utilities like trash, gas, the internet, some include cable, some include electric, some include all of it. And of course, that HOA fee will seem a lot higher, but then when you include all of those utilities, it's actually not so bad. So you just really have to compare apples to apples, see what they're covering to make a good sound decision. In general, you know, I look in the Midtown area a lot for condos for people and I will see, you know, if you're thinking you're going to get an HOA fee of like 150 bucks, that's just not going to happen. You know, some of the $200,000, $300,000 condo units, you'll probably have an HOA in that 250 to 350 price range. But once you get over that 500k price point, I've seen HOA fees, you know, I would say average you're going to be paying $500, $600 per month. And of course, your, your luxury condo units, you can definitely be paying over a thousand dollars so it really just all depends on the price point and the condition of that unit and the age okay so you've done the research on your condos you've identified a unit you're ready to make an offer what is next well some things you want to ask for in your offer and these are very typical and you should definitely be asking for them is one a copy of the bylaws now the bylaws are kind of boring to read in my opinion but they do outline the structure of the organization um, the rights and responsibilities of the members procedures for conducting meetings etc now the document you're probably going to be more concerned about is the CCRs or the conditions, covenants, and restrictions. This is going to be the outline of um, all the rules of the condo building. It's going to tell you what is a common area versus what is something that you own, what you're responsible for taking care of. Um, it'll let you know, you know, if you can put a grill on your patio, if you can put certain uh, shades on your windows, that kind of thing. So definitely ask for those. Another important thing to ask for is the budget, the annual budget. The main thing I like to look here on is to see, you know, what kind of reserves are they putting away for the year? Are they adding money to their reserves? And if you're not familiar what a reserve is, this is like a savings account for the HOA. So if something breaks, they have money in their savings account to fix it. Or if they plan to, you know, redo the, the carpeting in the hallways, well, they've got money in the reserves that they can pull from and they're not going to charge you for a special assessment to pay for that. 
finally, it can be a good idea to ask for a copy of the latest minutes from their most recent HOA meeting or even from the last several meetings. It just depends on how often they get together. Um, but here you can kind of find what they've been talking about. Are they talking about any kind of upcoming projects? The main thing you want to see is like, are they going to be asking to do a special assessment to collect more money to pay for these things? So always a good idea to now know what's kind of going on in the building that you are about to purchase in. So I'm sure you're wondering, okay, well, what's the market like in for condos in Atlanta? Should I buy one? Is it a good option? Of course, I'm going to say that really kind of depends on you and your personal situation, your goals. But let me head back over to my desk and I can show you some charts and give you kind of an overview of what the condo market has been doing. So before I jump into the data, one thing I should mention is that I have noticed that there really are not building a lot of new condo buildings. Now, there's one luxury high-rise building that they're building in Buckhead, and there's a couple newer buildings that have been constructed in the last couple, two, three years, and they're still trying to sell those units. And now it is a little bit of a higher price point, so that's a little bit of an issue, I think, too. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you look in Midtown, you're gonna see lots of cranes going up and you're thinking, my goodness, they're building high rises, condos everywhere. But no, a lot of those are apartment buildings. So if you think about it, you know, as we got a lot of people moving into the city, looking for a condo, uh, they're limited to what's currently available. We don't really have a lot of new construction to add to that supply. So I think the condo market is going to remain stable and strong, um, but there, it's gonna be a little bit of difference in terms of what price point you're looking in. So that's what I'm gonna show you next. Okay, to simplify our discussion, I'm just going to just look at the entire MLS area for condo units. And you can see the median sales price over the years. You can see there's little spikes up here and there, um, but I wanna look at days on market. So, um, you know, how long does it take once you list something to actually get it sold? And you're gonna see all these little dips. And this is very seasonal, um, even with, you know, single family homes and, you know, it's always in January. Uh, that you're going to see the highest peaks here of they're sitting on the market the longest and that's kind of typical you know in the December January February time frame people just aren't out looking as much and so you're going to see things sit around on the market a little bit longer so side note if you are looking for a condo and you don't have a timeline you might get a little better deal if you wait for those winter months to look Okay, but now I really want to tackle on price price range because that is really going to tell you a really good story here. So I've filtered here, let me filter on the 500,000 price point or below. And when I do that, let me just show you kind of month supply. Now month supply is telling you how long would it take to sell all the inventory that is currently on the market. A normal market is generally around a six month supply. Um, so anything below that, we would kind of consider that more of a seller's market. If it was above that, then we would call it a buyer's market. So um, you can kind of see which way your negotiations would be going. So here for the month supply uh, for $500,000 and under, you can see 1.6 months. So not a lot of time. So that would kind of, that would definitely signal that it is still a seller's market for that price range. If we go to the 500 to 750 price point, uh, it's a little higher right now. We're currently at four months of inventory. It's creeped up a little bit since the fall of uh, 2022. But then look at what happens when we get to the 750, 750,000 up to the million price range. Uh, we are seeing a spike going up to 7.7 .7 months. So what does that tell me? There's a lot more higher end condo units sitting a little bit longer. And that would also signal that there's probably some more negotiation going on between the buyer and the seller. We're gonna get kind of a similar story when we're talking about days on market. So again, how long is the condo sitting on the market before it gets sold? And you can kind of see over the years, it's kind of had its swings again, 
This goes back to, uh, you know, you're going to have it sit on the market longer during that January timeframe. Um, and here you can see for the $500,000 or less market, uh, we, you know, we had the uptick of 33 days starting in January, but as we are rolling through February and March, April, that's the data that I have for this year so far, it's definitely decreased down to 13 days. So um, condos, $500,000 are selling a lot faster. Uh, if you compare that to like the 750,000 to a million dollar range, let's look here, they're peaking up now in, it was at 48 days uh, in March and it's, it's slid down a little bit in April of uh, down to 42 days, but still, those are sitting a lot longer than the $500,000 or less range. One final thing I'll talk about is, you know, what are condos selling for as a percentage of the list price? And you'll see for the 500K and below, you could see here in May of 2022, things were selling 102%. Um, it's dipped back down even a little below 100%. And currently we're looking, you know, as of April of 2023, that we're about, things are selling right at, at list price. So there's definitely some strong demand for those condos that are priced in the 500 or below category. Whereas if we look at, you know, something in the million dollar plus range, uh, that's definitely a lot more variable. And you can see that, um, it is definitely trending downwards in terms of the sales price to list price. So on, uh, the median sales to list price, uh, for April of 2023 was 90% versus even the month before it was at 96%. So there's definitely some more wiggle room in that luxury condo market. So the main theme here is that the lower price condo units are definitely selling quicker than some of the condo units that are in more in that 750 above price range. And I think there's a really valid reason for this. One, you know, if you're a, someone that's looking to live in the city and especially if you're, you know, a first time home buyer and you have a budget of $500,000, you're just not going to find a lot of single family homes for $500,000 you know, that are pretty in, in pretty good condition. Um, so you're gonna be looking at that condo route. So um, it's a great option for those first time home buyers or people just that, you know, you don't wanna spend over $500,000, you go the condo route. But when you start getting in that 750 to a million dollar range, then you have to explore your options. And I think that's what people are doing. They're, you know, checking out different buildings if they really wanna go the condo route, but they may be also exploring, you know, what kind of single family homes are out there in certain Certain neighborhoods, maybe they want to go that route. So people are taking a little bit more time to make that decision. Now that we've talked a little bit about the market, let me connect you with a local lender here in the Atlanta area. Her name is Shannon Bradshaw. She is one sharp cookie. She works for Bank South Mortgage. She's been in the industry for over 18 years and I'm going to bring her on and we're just going to talk about what does a lender look for in getting your loan um, approved and so you can actually buy that condo because there's some some things you need to know about that um, just to know the process and have a good understanding of that. So let me get her hey in everyone. Here. Okay. As I promised, I've got Shannon here. Shannon, I've already told everyone about you. So, so say hello to all my YouTube friends out there and my YouTube friends say hello to Shannon. Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us today. So Shannon, I've already talked to uh, my people here that about condos, buying a condo in Atlanta, and you are local here in Atlanta as a lender at Bank South. And, you know, buying a condo is a little bit different than buying a single family home. Can you just tell us what is different when someone's going to get a loan for a condo versus a single family home? What extra step do you have to look at? So there's three sides to a loan approval on a condo versus a single family or fee simple townhouse. You have the valuation of the property, which is the appraisal, making sure that the value meets the sale price. There is you, the borrower, as a credit risk. And if you meet that, then of course, that would translate to any property, assuming it's a comparable housing payment. But thirdly, on a condo, you have the HOA. Because when you own a condo, you own the air, not the land. And that might seem like a crazy concept. But buying into an HOA is like buying into a club and your investment quality is as good as the HOA budget is sound as the actual structure that you're buying into is sound and that all of the unit owners 
all play nice together. So Shannon, well, how do you learn more about the HOA as a lender? Well, what usually triggers, of course, the study into the HOA is when a buyer is looking at a specific condo because every HOA is different. Every condominium is different. They have different amenities. They have different needs as far as a budget. So a lot of this, I must say about condos, is going to be case by case. You can't really use a lot of rules of thumb here. But as a rule of thumb, uh, as far as looking at conventional financing, so we're talking about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, probably the loans most of your buyers are going to be looking for. Um, that is going to be a condo questionnaire. And beyond that, and dependent upon what that buyer is looking to do as far as is it primary residence, is it investment? Again, there's all kinds of dimensions we can study here. But that questionnaire is going to be a universal questionnaire issued through those conventional channels. So either Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, they both have a questionnaire, very similar line of questioning. The lender is actually not going to order that until you have a binding contract. That's the tricky part because your buyer is not going to know fully what those answers are going to be right away. And the other piece of this is that most often these HOAs are managed by the unit owners, but they pay a management company to handle all of the actual money and the data that is pushed out month over month as far as budget and reserves and all those key questions that can be answered on the questionnaire. So the lender is going to order the questionnaire through the management company. And this is where things get a little complicated because that's a third party. And as soon as you're under contract as a buyer, you need an allowance of time for that management company to share that information back to the lender. So once we receive that questionnaire, then we can actually see what those answers look like and give the buyer that assurance of whether or not the HOA passes the test. Yeah. And I, I've definitely seen that some condos, like you said, their associations are really good at getting that information back to you timely versus others can take a little bit more time. So yeah. um, it's definitely a case by case scenario, like you said. Um, so I understand. Okay. So you have this list of questions from a condo questionnaire and everything, everything checks out, but, um, I'm just thinking of like, sometimes things don't check out. Like I had a buyer one time who she was planning on putting 5% down on a condo and things were rolling along. And then that lender got the condo questionnaire back, or I think they were looking at the budget or something like that. And Turns out that they that condo building didn't have quite enough reserves in their account. And so that lender went back to my buyer and said, hey, you actually need to bump up your your down your deposit to uh, 10% down versus 5%. Luckily, my buyer did have that. Um, she had the extra cash she could pull from her savings to um, still get that condo. But um, that's just, I think, one example perhaps of you know, where things, you know, you expect everything to go smoothly until you get to these little hiccups. Um, do you have another, you know, example or um, where, you know, it does matter how much you're putting down on a condo? Yes. So what that translates to um, is the why part. Okay. So when you get a loan for, you know, purchasing a property, no matter what it's for the investor, the lender, it's all about risk. So you have to position it that way and better understand. If your buyer is putting more down, the lender is slowly reducing their risk the more and more you put down. And in the condo space, the lender has a little bit more of an allowance for certain things when you put more money down because you're mitigating that risk with that down payment. And there are certain benchmarks, call it milestones, where the conventional lenders, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac again, if you put down 10% or more in a condo, most often you can do something called a limited review of the condo. The lender isn't going to go as deep uh, into a dive on the HOA. And furthermore, the questionnaire itself is a little bit shorter in length. It's not going to ask a lot of the questions. So often tell people um, consulting with buying houses, buying condos, put yourself in the investor's shoes. If you were lending money to someone you would never meet what would you think to do? And oftentimes someone buying a house doesn't think that way. And furthermore, they know they want to make the payment. They know that they're a good risk. They want the property. They want the loan. But the lender is always thinking about what happens in the event the loan doesn't get repaid and we have to own the property and try to resell it. So I'll kind of piggyback on 
the five to 10% down piece and say, ultimately, the lender's just trying to make sure it's a worthy investment and that the HOA is solvent. And as a buyer, a good way to spin this in a positive light is anything the lender is doing to vet the HOA is actually beneficial to you because right. you're going in and someone's actually doing that research for you. Yeah, it's boring. No, it's not fun. <laughs> but as the buyer, you don't have to do it because the lender's doing it for you and you're learning a lot more. And no one wants to enter into buying something with a plan to have extra in their piggy bank and then have to tap into that. That's not a good feeling. I don't like those, oh, by the ways, and that's a big one. So preventing those is really important. And that's why when you do talk about buying a condo, being part of an HOA, your initial conversation with that lender, really getting an understanding of how much they know about condos and how much they can help you navigate through what to do, best practices, expectations. Again, it's just a third dimension of financing a property that's not there otherwise. So well, I will say, you know, it, it, there's a lot of intricate pieces and, you know, just for those of you out there think of, of buying a condo, it's really important that you get a lender that it's going to be a really good resource for you for helping you through that condo purchasing process, because there's just so many pieces up to it. And if you don't have, you know, a well um, rounded lender that knows all of these pieces, then you could find yourself into to some, you know, rocky waters, so yeah. to speak. And a, an insider tip um, that would, you know, be for any lender out there is Fannie Mae has a condo project manager. Every single lender that issues a conventional loan has access to this. Let me be clear. I have found all too often lenders will originate the condo and allow the underwriter to log into that portal and see if the condo is already approved or if mm -hmm. there's been a prior review of that condo that had some kind of red flag. My first line of defense when someone enters into a condo contract, or if we can look at it beforehand, I look up the condo on that condo project manager. And if it's already Fannie Mae approved, that is your golden ticket. It means that Fannie Mae has said, this condo looks great. All we need to do is get a copy of the master homeowners association insurance policy. And that's a relatively easy task. And we don't need anything beyond that. Um, other than, again, just making sure that the, the insurance coverage on the master uh, condo is solvent and, you know, covers what we need it to cover. Well, that's that's a really good piece of information just for people. If you're you know vetting out different lenders, trying to figure out who to go with, you could ask them, hey, do you look up in the condo project manager? Is that what it's called? Yeah. OK. <laughs> but I, I, there would probably be a really long, awkward silence by the loan officer and go, how do you know that? But yeah. Hey, yeah. it's good to be informed. <laughs> well, and if you really want to, you can always just Google Fannie Mae condo guidelines and you'll get the whole thing. <laughs> God, oh, so exciting. <laughs> no, you don't need to do that, but they're out yeah. there. It's it's public knowledge. It's yeah. just that most people don't know to look for it. And you know what? That's the loan officer's job, honestly. And if yeah. they do their job right, they should have a lot of that knowledge top of mind. Mm -hmm. And then once you start diving into the individual HOA, Mm -hmm. that's when you can look up some of the nuances once you get yeah. that questionnaire back or, you know, another thing, good rate tip for agents too. I mean, you, you guys communicate a lot. Um, ha talk to other agents who have recently closed in there, find out, you know, if they have a recent questionnaire, mm -hmm. you know, de details change month over month because the budget and HOA yeah. dues um, are paid monthly. And that's one of those questions that comes up is, are there more than 15% of the unit owners who are delinquent on their mm -hmm. HOA dues? But keep in mind, the due date could be the 10th, the 5th of every month. And if people are a few days late and you order that condo questionnaire on the 10th, you know, that's the tricky part with some of these questionnaires. And as lenders behind the scenes, we're always hustling to try to get things refreshed and updated so that, you know, something like that, that could just be a trailing yeah. number doesn't completely change the game. Yeah. I will say you do a good job of hiding all that information from me. So we're not in panic like all time because I think there's so many little yeah. pieces that would like freak us out. So um, 
Along the lines, well, I guess kind of switching topics a little bit, you know, I have a lot of people that ask about buying a condo that they can rent out or they're wanting to buy a condo that is in um, a building where there's no leasing restrictions. So that condo might have a lot of rental units in in it. Are there any restrictions on buying a condo where there's a high volume of rentals in the building? Yes. So the key piece here is, you have two kinds of people who talk about buying condos for investment. You have the people who want to actually buy and live there as their primary residence, or maybe even as second home, which is defined by two weeks out of the year. Maybe they live, you know, outside the city and commute in whatever. But if someone actually says, I am buying this specifically for investment, then you're declaring to the lender, that's the intent. And so we are going to look and see if the condo has 50% um, investor concentration. So if there's more than 50%, then immediately you cannot purchase it with investment occupancy. Now, if you're buying it as a primary residence or second home, we don't look at that because you're living there primarily. Mm -hmm. So there's really no reason to go beyond that. Okay. Good to know. Well, that's why I liked having you on here. Just Having your knowledge in the lending world is super helpful for us and for any of those that are, you know, potentially thinking about buying a condo in the future. Now, now they know a little bit more about the piece of, you know, obtaining a loan for a condo. And it's, um, there's just a few extra little steps, but like I said, having a good lender in your, in your, um, on your team is very pivotal in this situation. So Shannon, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put all of your contact information below in um, the, the notes and then also in the comments. So if any of you that are watching and you have questions about anything in uh, about getting a loan, you know, reach out to Shannon. She's local here in Atlanta. She has a wealth of knowledge. Um, she doesn't bite. So um, Shannon. No. <laughs> Certainly not through the camera. Um, I, I, I will end with this. And, and as I said, like everything's so case by case and every buyer is an individual and really learning more is is so crucial. And yeah. it just, it lends itself to more confidence in the decisions that you make. Just take the time. And, you know, I actually try to keep it light and not make the experience so boring. Um, it's not an interview, it's a conversation. Yeah. And you always sure. learn something because, you know, I, the content is not always that exciting, but when <laughs> you're looking to buy a house, it's super exciting when you know something is possible that you didn't realize. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you're in it, you're, you're totally wanting to know everything and anything that yep. you can get your, your hands on. So Well, thanks again, Shannon, for joining us. You're my first ever guest on my YouTube channel. So you should feel very special. (laughs) I do a hundred percent. And may I say you are a fantastic resource as well. And you know your stuff. um, And I appreciate you really trying to get good information out there. Thank you. All right. Okay. With that, you guys, that is all I've got for you on my video here to talk about condos. So until next time, I'll see you around the neighborhood. Bye.